Unit Eight, Page Seventy Seven. Watch the lecture. Part D. Listen for details. Okay, today we're going to talk about Frank Gehry, one of my favorite architects. If you've seen any of the buildings he's designed, like the Dancing House in Prague, you'll know why. It's a wonderful, colorful building near the river. Many tourists go to see it. But today, we'll consider Frank Gehry's work not as tourists, but as architects. It's understood that architecture is both the science and the art of designing buildings. We use science to make sure that the building is strong, and we use art because we want the building to be beautiful. In other words, we think about the aesthetics or artistic value of the building. Now, here I want to mention Vitruvius, the Roman architect who lived in the first century BCE. He said that a building must have three fundamental characteristics: one, meet its intended use; two, be sound, which means strong; and three, be beautiful. He wrote these ideas two thousand years ago, and they're still the foundation of architecture today. Let's go over these three characteristics in depth. First, a building must meet its intended use. Architects would think about the the reason the building is being built as they design it. For example, the intended use for a school is a place to learn, right? Here, architects must ask themselves, what type of design is best for both students and teachers? Second, a building must be structurally sound. What do I mean by this? I mean the design must follow these basic principles. Is it safe? Will it last a long time? Will it protect people from bad weather? Architects agree that a building must be able to do all of these things. Third, a building must be beautiful. Now, aesthetics is a harder principle to agree on, and buildings last a long time if they're built properly. And so, something built 50 years ago may not be considered beautiful now. Styles in architecture change, like. With clothes or cars. All right. To highlight what I've said thus far, in addition to meeting the intended use, a building's design must also be structurally sound and aesthetically pleasing to people. Is everyone clear on this? Now I'd like to shift to talking about Frank Gehry's work and how he applied these three characteristics of architecture. Have any of you seen his buildings? Like. The Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles, or the Fish Dance Restaurant in Kobe, Japan. That looks like a gigantic fish. I see a few hands. Great. Then you'll know what I mean when I say his style is very distinct. He was an architectural pioneer who wasn't afraid to try new ideas. His designs are exciting and inspirational because they push us to explore the possibilities. Specifically, how can we describe his style? I can think of three words: resourceful, playful, and innovative. It's resourceful because of the building materials. It's playful because of the bright colors and fun designs, like his store in Venice, California, with giant binoculars at the entrance. And it's innovative because he said goodbye to traditional architecture and experimented with new ideas. Now let's look at these three descriptions one at a time. Resourceful. In the 1970s, Gehry started utilizing simple building materials in his designs, like sheet metal and plywood. In fact, <laughs> he's famous for using chain link fence, the kind of fence you see around construction sites to keep people out. I'm sure, you've all seen it around a building being built. Since he knew the fencing would always be there, he decided to use it in his designs. For example, he designed a mall in California with a huge wall, six stories high, covered in chain link fence. He went on to use other materials, of course, but started there. Playful. His designs use bright, bold colors like yellow, orange, blue, and gold. Examples include the EMP Museum in Seattle and the DG Bank Building in Germany. And finally, innovative. 
Many of his buildings don't have straight walls. He uses irregular angles and shapes. A great example of this is the Vitra Design Museum in Germany. That's V-I-T-R-A. The building looks like it could fall down, to be honest. But of course it won't, because Gary designed it to be structurally sound. So how did Gary develop his dynamic style? Up until the early 1970s, he did traditional architecture. However, he didn't feel it allowed him to be creative enough. He began experimenting with his design ideas by working on houses, including his own house in Santa Monica, California, which he worked on from 1977 to 1978. Many neighbors didn't like the design of his house, but but Gary did. Now we ask, why did he develop this distinct style? He once said that he thinks like an artist. For him, a building is like a big sculpture or a big work of art. He pushes the limits of what is structurally possible from an engineering standpoint in order to create beautiful buildings. But I want to stress, he's also said that he always keeps in mind that a building is a sculpture that people interact with. If the building doesn't please them as a work of art and meet the intended use, he's failed in his objective. In closing, I want to say that Frank Gehry is a noteworthy architect because his work challenges me and other architects to consider how to use simple materials while designing strong, beautiful, and purposeful structures. Now go build something.